Hey everyone, Juan Valdez here, and today in this video, I wanted to go over how I was able to make over $11,000 in one single day. Uh, I wanted to just pull up my Shopify app. It's not a screenshot, I'm gonna go right there onto the Shopify app. I pull up the date, as you guys can see right there, on the 22nd of February of 2019, we did over, we did $11,246 in one day. I wanted to make this video to show you guys an update and just kind of keep you guys in the loop with this new micro brand that me and my business partner launched a little over 30 days ago now and kind of show you guys just along the journey, some of the ups and some of the downs. Uh, I'm gonna make other videos breaking down some of the, things that we've kind of encountered with this micro brand because it hasn't all been like you know glorious and like all just like perfectly out planned like we wanted all to come out like we've had some inconveniences we've had some delays in products like there's been a lot of it's been an interesting journey for sure but it's not as glamorous as just like making having an eleven thousand dollar day or making over 157 thousand in one month like there's been a lot of, that goes to that in this specific video I wanted to go over and break down what I think led to us having these kind of results because we haven't just done these kind of numbers one day. Like we have another day here. We had another day where we did, you know, very similar. It wasn't as big of a day, but let me just double check to see here. We have here on look the 24th, we did 9,220. Uh, I think we also had like another $10,000 day. And for me personally, this isn't like my one of my biggest days. I've had other stores that have done up to 20K in one day. But for this micro brand, these are great numbers. I wanted to break down exactly what we're doing to get these kind of results. I guarantee you guys what I'm going to go over in this video, not a lot of people are spending enough time really explaining to you guys. I guarantee you guys. It took me some time to kind of wrap my head around this all. And it wasn't until now I would say that I've actually been able to put it all into place and actually see how beneficial using this specific strategy within your business can be. So um, we'll just dive right into it because I do have a lot that I want to cover here. So again, this is going to be on how I was able to make $11,246 in just a single day. Now to kind of get started, I wanted to break down what's called a marketing funnel and have you guys really understand how this works because this is one of the most important keys to getting these kind of results. I, I personally think again, I'm just going based off my own personal experience, but also experience from other e-commerce entrepreneurs that I learned from and that I really look up to. So one of the things that I think people don't spend enough time talking about is how you can market to your leads or your customers, depending on what kind of stage you're at in a marketing funnel. So there's basically three stages to a marketing funnel. Right here you can see you have awareness, which is the top of the funnel. So basically top of the funnel awareness is these are for, these are a bucket of people that pretty much have never seen you before. They don't know who you are. This is when you're first introducing yourself to them, right? And so the main purpose of the top of the funnel is again, to introduce yourself to your prospects. Typically you're not really getting many conversions right here. This is really the first interaction that people have had with you. It, there's a specific way to market for people that are brand new to you, right? Brand new prospects. Now from there, you have the consideration phase, which is the middle of the funnel, which is more where you focus on informing your prospects about your product or your service that you have available. And typically this is also known as like lead nurturing. You know, once you kind of get them through the door, how do you uh, provide them information, provide value to them to actually keep them moving along the funnel? Because typically not everybody that sees your ad is going to buy from you right away. So understanding these different stages in the marketing funnel is very important because it allows you to understand how you should be marketing to your customers, depending on what stage of the marketing funnel they're actually in. Typically consideration would be someone that would see your ad either on Facebook or Instagram for the very first time would be in the awareness phase. Then from there, if they don't buy from you right away, which most people don't, they would be in the consideration phase where they saw you, they saw your website, they may have saw your product added to cart, but they didn't check out. So that's the consideration phase. And then obviously the bottom of the funnel is a decision. This is where the main focus is to convince 
your prospects why you are the best option and you know eventually get them to buy i'm gonna get into specific details on you know kind of covering these three areas of the marketing funnel but i also wanted to show you guys a breakdown of the different platforms and the different channels we're using to advertise because we're using different channels to advertise and market to our customers depending on where they are in the marketing funnel and it's th this is exactly how we're able to get, generate these kind of results right so for example what i mean by using different channels to market to different customers depending on where they are in the marketing funnel is for example we use facebook facebook ads between facebook and instagram to really market for to top of the funnel of awareness prospects right people to see us for the very first time then from there we use email marketing and google ads for the consideration phase in order to give them more information about the product towards the bottom of the funnel to get them to convince them to buy we're typically using a combination of retargeting on facebook google and also sending out email incentives so we're using a combination of all three of those like main marketing channels so i wanted to give you guys a breakdown of on this specific day you know what the numbers look like on all three of those platforms because this is going to allow you guys to understand that i'm not just saying these things to say like they actually work so i'm inside of my facebook ads account and this is again for february 22nd for the specific day if we go down to the bottom here you guys can see that on this day we spent three thousand 129 dollars and got a return of uh seven thousand five hundred ninety four so I wanted to also break down the ad spend for this day, for this day, so you guys can see that I'm being completely transparent with you guys. So we spent roughly three thousand dollars on Facebook. Now this is inside my Google Analytics account, showing my Google Ads and Google Ad campaigns. Uh, you can see right here for this day, the 22nd. You can see right here the day 22nd. I spent a total of three hundred and forty-two dollars and brought back in twenty-seven seventy-six on Google, so two thousand seven hundred and seventy-six dollars on Google Ads, and then. We use Clavio for email marketing. You can see that from emails, we brought in an additional $1,700 just from email marketing. That's the breakdown of the different channels that we use to advertise and the results that we were able to get from them. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys different channels and the results that we got from these different channels is because I don't think that we would have been able to generate these kind of results on a day-to-day -day basis if we weren't using all the different marketing channels the way we were this module in particular it is going to be a lot more advanced like this is probably going to be for people that have been in this space for some time and looking to get just take their results to the next level because once you implement these strategies into your business you're guaranteed you're going to get a lot better results than you've been getting so i wanted to go over top of the funnel awareness middle of the funnel and bottom of the funnel and then uh, also the retention phase and kind of just break those down and how we you, you know kind of how we market to those different stages so for top of the funnel awareness Basically at this stage of the funnel, you want to assume that the audience are either vaguely aware of a problem which has sparked them to consider a solution, and typically the solution is your product, or not aware of a problem at all. In which case, it is the responsibility of the business to highlight any areas which can be improved. So your goal is to make sure that your whatever platform you're using to market for the top of the funnel, for us, we use Facebook ads, we're bringing up the, the problem that our prospects probably have and we're also presenting the solution to them as well. You need to consider that this customer knows absolutely nothing about your product and service. But that's what you need to think about when you're making your ads to market to talk, you know, cold traffic, people that have never seen you before. Typically in this stage, you wanna have interactive content. Pur there should be a specific purpose for the type of content you use for top of the funnel. Ideally, you want the content you use for top of the funnel to introduce the company and boost awareness uh, this is going to be the first time people see you, so you want to make sure it focuses on who you are, the company, uh, somewhat of the brand, if you have any brand awareness, and the product, of course. And then you want to identify the problem that the audience may be having, even if they are unaware of them. So you want to make sure you address the problem that hopefully you have a product that solves a problem or that addresses a concern or makes something easier. You want to make sure you're addressing whatever the ultimate benefit is of your product. You want to make sure that you're addressing that within the marketing that you're doing when it comes to top of the funnel because this is super important. This is how you get people into your marketing funnel to begin with. So you wanna spend a decent amount of time with that. Again, on Facebook, we're making these videos really going over the benefit of using the product and the problem that it's solving. So we keep it pretty simple. Now, middle of the funnel. This stage of the funnel is primarily centered upon informing the customer and placing them in a position where 
they are able to fully consider the product or service that you are offering them. Information in this instance can mean further information about the brand following any general introductory info at the top of the funnel, specific product or service information, or even information that poses a question to prospective the customer. Now, some of you guys may not understand all of that, but basically in the middle of the funnel, this is where you want to spend a good amount of time, you know, providing your customers with information. So personally, what we do is we set up specific email automation so that when somebody opts in to our website or if they visit our website and they don't check out our product or add a product to cart, we're typically trying to get them to opt in for like a coupon by either using like an email pop-up or like an exit intent. We know that anyone that visits the site is obviously in the middle of top of the funnel awareness, but also they're in the middle of awareness stage. And so so what we do here is we address the middle of the funnel stage and what we do is we focus on providing value and providing information to the customer about the product or service that we have to offer. And so typically what we do is we have a series of like five to seven different email automations, all content emails going out to the customer, just informing them about the product, making them more knowledgeable on our product and just providing them information because typically the reason why people don't buy right away at the top of the funnel is because they just need more information. That's just how we are, right? Not everybody's gonna buy right away when they see your ad, they wanna know more. And so that's what you wanna focus on addressing on the middle of the funnel stage. If you don't focus on addressing the middle of the funnel stage, it's really hard to take someone from top of the funnel straight to buy, right? There's gonna be, that's a huge gap. And so you wanna make sure you fill that gap with information to the customer. Typically, you can also adjust middle of the funnel by retargeting people with, you know, content, not retargeting them straight to purchase, but maybe retargeting them to like a blog page or a blog post where they can read more about your product, right? You would basically retarget anyone that lands on your uh, home page or your product page but does not go to the, the, the cart page, you would retarget them differently than you would retarget the people that actually land on the cart page. What that would do is you'd be filtering out the people that are in middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, and top of the funnel at the same time. So the purpose of any interactive content at this stage of the funnel is threefold. You wanna inform visitors of a solution to any problems identified at the top of the funnel. You wanna highlight benefits and advantages of such solutions. And you wanna spark interest and encourage audiences to learn more about your product or service. So just like we kinda of went over, this is what you wanna focus on with the content that you're using for to address or market to the people that are in the middle of the funnel. But that's not all. In fact, the top of the funnel and the middle of the funnel actually work hand in hand. Typically, you wanna have content that's interactive for the middle of the funnel that also assists with awareness, visibility, and lead generation because all the content has to be congruent. So you can't just have content about a product in the top of the funnel, but then start talking about other products and services in, in the middle of the funnel. You wanna make sure everything still lines up because if you get someone to come in for a specific product and you don't give them enough information for that product and then you start offering them other products, well, that's not gonna bring them down to the bottom of the funnel. That's gonna actually delay the process because they still don't know enough about any of the products where they're, feel, they're feeling comfortable enough to actually make a decision and buy from you. You wanna make sure you address that. Now, after middle of the funnel, we go into bottom of the funnel and kind of making a decision and how to actually get people to buy from you. So once the prospect arrives at the bottom of the funnel, they're thinking about making a purchase or taking some other form of action which suggests that they are in a position to buy. Therefore, the purpose of any interactive content used at this stage of the funnel is to ultimately boost conversion rates and encourage customers to come back. So at the bottom of the funnel, you're marketing to these people a lot differently than you're marketing to everybody else. So example of people that are in the bottom of the funnel anyone that's added a product to their cart but hasn't checked out those are people that are at the bottom of the funnel they're just missing like a, a little bit of information or content or an incentive typically like a coupon code or a discount before they actually just move forward and buy from you so typically the way we address our bottom of the funnel prospects or leads is by retargeting them with uh, typically like a coupon if they land it on the cart page or setting up specific email automations to go out with specific incentives for people that actually add a product to the cart but don't check out. And these incentives are typically a lot higher, like they're typically higher discounts for example or just a lot better incentives that we offer for people that are just landing on the homepage and opting in for like a free coupon because they're different people, right? People, someone that lands on the homepage is not as valuable compared to somebody that adds a product to cart. So that's what you wanna make sure you, you market to them differently. 
Now, in our, the content at the bottom of the funnel should convince the visitors that you have the advantage, you have better product, better products, better pricing. You typically want to make sure you clarify on that once you have someone that's like all the way at the bottom of the funnel. So typically the ads should address why they should buy from you compared to like competitors and things like that. You want to encourage your visitors to take some form of action with a focus on transactions, typically on making, on actually buying from you. You want to provide a positive customer experience to increase brand loyalty. So typically for the bottom of the funnel, you want to make things as smooth as possible. So if you're setting up emails or you're retargeting back to your, you know, your checkout page, make sure that that transition is easy as possible. So that if they do land on your checkout page, it's very easy for them to go and finish their order and just buy. The content that you make should focus on retention, meaning that once that customer actually buys from you, it's not the last thing they're going to see you. You want to get them prepared to see more content. Uh, and actually buy from you more than once because the goal is, isn't to just have a customer buy from you once, it's to get them to buy over and over and over again. And last but not least, the content that you create should focus on increasing buyer frequency, right? The amount of time they actually buy from you. And so you wanna make sure you are addressing all different stages of the marketing funnel or the prospecting funnel. If you're not marketing to your customers depending on what stage of the funnel there are, what stage of awareness they're at, you're not going to get the best possible returns. For example, if you have someone that visits just your homepage, doesn't really do much, just checks out the homepage and leaves. If you're marketing to them, offering them like straight up 15% coupon to buy now without providing any more value or any more information about your product or service, very unlikely that that's going to convert as well compared to if you focus on remarketing to that customer or retargeting them with an ad leading to a blog post or send them an email that has more information about the product. That's going to do a lot better because again, you're addressing that that person just needs more information. You're providing the information they need and you're pushing them down the funnel because once you get them to come back and read either the email or the article or the blog post, well, you can then retarget people based on them reading the blog post, for example, or you can send specific emails to people that open up specific emails that you send out. The last part that I also wanted to go over is the retention, which comes after you get somebody through the door. Everybody thinks that in the marketing funnel, everything, the, the, the sale ends when somebody buys from you. In reality, I don't think that that's true. I think that's actually when the sale starts because again, my personal focus isn't to get all one-time customers. My focus is to get somebody through the door to buy from me once, but also get them to buy from me more than once with you know upsells, downsells, cross-sells, email marketing, all these different things, right? So many businesses make the mistake of thinking that the bottom of the funnel is the end of the funnel, but there's actually a hidden layer lurking underneath which focuses upon customer retention. More experienced e-commerce businesses, they understand that retention is important, especially considering that it costs between five to 25 times more to acquire a new customer and to get someone brand new to buy from you compared to somebody that's already purchased from you before. So everybody knows that at least more experienced businesses know that it's a lot harder to get a brand new customer to buy from you than it is to get an existing customer to buy from you. That's why people focus on really nurturing their leads even after they buy because they know that they can make a lot easier sales with existing customers. So, uh, typically the content around your retention, which is like post-purchase, is to really focus on highlighting a brand's or your brand's relevance within the current market. It should focus on keeping the brand fresh in the customer's mind. It should demonstrate new ways in which the brand can benefit the customer. It should also show that the customer's business is really appreciated by the brand. So typically what we do for this is we have different email automations that go out to our customers saying like, hey, thank you so much for buying from us. And typically from there, we're sending out like content emails, just sending them more information about the brand, the product that they bought, that they've purchased from us, and also other products we have available. We're not just sending like sales emails. And that's a mistake that everybody does, right? They just focus on sending like sales emails. Emails. Uh, me and my business partner focus on going really in depth into detail in this inside of the Ecom Accelerator 2.0 program that we have. There's going to be a link down below this video where you guys can check it out. This is only for people that are serious about either starting or growing their e-commerce business. So if you guys are interested, feel free to check it out down in the link below. Besides that, I hope you guys got value from this video. It took me some time to kind of put this all together. And this is something that I've learned over a specific amount of time. Like this took me a long time to kind of learn myself and to actually implement it and get it to all work. So I'm gonna make more content around some of the specific things that I kind of went over that I didn't get to like go into too much detail in, in the upcoming videos. But if you guys learned anything from this video, I'd appreciate if you dropped a like. 
Um, any questions you have on anything that I went over, drop them down in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you guys. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, join the family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.